Welcome to a new Smart Money video on investing. Today we're going to talk about how to begin as an investor. What are the things you need to start with? What are some of the foundations and understanding that if you get it, you can start this journey successfully? So many investors lose money and what I'm going to cover today helps you to start in a way so that you don't lose money, but rather start positively and grow your wealth from the beginning understanding what is possible and what you can do about it. In this video, we will also do a number of worked examples and I will show you how powerful compounding is and the returns that you can expect. So look out for those as we go along. They form an important part of your investing plan. If you like to learn about finance, investing, personal growth and business, please subscribe. So let's start off. Why do we need some tips and hints on investing in the first place. Most people have only a few thousand dollars saved up. And what this means is they don't have enough money for a deposit on a house, to send their kids to college, or even to think about retirement. Investing when done correctly can help you achieve all those goals and so many more. Area number one on investing for beginners is the foundations. And it's important as key number one, you can start now. It doesn't matter how small you start with. The important thing is to start. A savings account is not an investment. Generally, you will only get a few percent of interest. And if you were lucky, you will beat inflation. The problem with this is that inflation actually means your money is worth less year on year. Whereas investing is about growing your money year on year. So a savings account might lose you a little bit of money or gain you a very small amount of money. So savings is out. That's not investing. With investing, it is important we start as early as we can. Now, how early should you start? Right now. <laughs> it sounds funny, but let me put some charts up on investing over 10 years with a 10% return and you will see the rate of growth that you can get on your money and what that means is if you look back 10 years from now, you will thank yourself for getting started. The next tip under foundations that I'd like to mention is to make investing automatic. There's a lot of companies and there's a lot of ways that you can pretty much make it so that a debit order comes off your account each month and takes a certain portion of money towards the investments that you are making. The next part of the foundations is that you do need to learn a little bit about the tax breaks that your country offers you. In America, you can get a 401k and in other countries, it is often called a retirement annuity or a pension fund. Now, if your company does match contribution, it's important that you take it to the limit. A company will often say, hey, we will contribute up to 6%, which means you should then contribute the 6% so they match the 6% because that will give you as much money as possible that is tax free towards your investment. This will multiply your wealth. Here is another quick example of 3% over 10 years versus 6% over 10 years, along with 9% and 12%. It is a significant difference. So let's look over area number one and just recap. Number one, you can start small. Number two, a savings account is not investing. Number three, start as early as possible. Number four, make your investments automatic. Number five, use the tax breaks of your country and maximize your investments. Area number two in investing for beginners is about stocks. And this is often what comes to mind when people talk about investing. But as we've already illustrated, there are a number of other ways to invest. So what about stocks? So what about stocks? What do you need to know in order to successfully invest and to begin investing in stocks. The three basic things that are important to know are the types of investments. You could invest in index funds, mutual funds, or individual stocks. Index funds are a grouping of stocks that you can directly invest in, such as the S&P 500, which is the top 500 performing listed companies in the United States. Now, if you invest into the S&P 500, the cumulative effect of all those companies, so how they're all performing together, you get to participate in that. So if they all decrease, then the index decreases and your investment will decrease. If they all increase, 
your investment will increase. Now, if the winners outperform the losers, and remember, you're talking about the top 500. When company number 501 becomes better than company number 500, they get swapped out. So there's this continual swapping for the best companies, which is what makes index funds so attractive. There are different index funds which allow you to invest in different areas. You can invest in the S&P 500, which is the top 500 listed companies in America, or the NASDAQ 100, which is more IT and tech orientated top 100 companies. Or you could invest in uh, the UK, the FTSE 100, which are the top 100 companies listed in the UK. I'm going to briefly share what a mutual fund is and then we're going to share the rate of return on mutual funds, stocks and index funds and what you can expect. So a mutual fund now is instead of the top performing companies, a fund manager chooses a basket of stocks around a certain theme and that means that all the stocks are related to that. So you might have a construction mutual fund or a a real estate mutual fund which we will speak about later and that means that when you buy into that fund you're going to have the same performance as what that fund manager is doing with all those different stocks and shares number three is to individually invest in stocks yourself the interesting thing here is that you can really outperform the market or you can actually lose a lot of money so this is for the seasoned investor the one who has taken the time to learn and understand. So for beginners in investing, it is not advised to invest in individual stocks. Rather choose a mutual fund or an index fund. Now, what about the returns? It's very interesting. Individual stock returns can get into hundreds of percent in some years, but that's extraordinary. And that's what everyone thinks and wants from investing in stocks, but it doesn't often happen. Rather, individual investors who trade stocks often, the statistics tell us 78% of them lose money. So in other words, it is difficult and hard. So what about beginners now? Let's put individual stocks aside. For beginners, it is mutual funds or index funds. Both of them perform about the same. And over a 10 year period, you can expect an eight to 10% return on your money annualized. In other words, each year, you're gonna have fluctuations up and down. Maybe one year you get 5%, another year 13, the next year minus two. But if over a 10 year period you average it out, you get between eight and 10%. So you can see, it doesn't matter if you into the best performing mutual funds or the popular index funds, you're gonna get a very similar return. The risk on mutual funds though, is if you get a bad fund manager or you choose a bad industry around which the basket of funds is created, you're going to lose out. However, if you choose a good industry, you will do even better than the eight to 10% benchmark. If you are enjoying this video, remember to smash that like button. It helps the channel out. So now what about our examples? Let's put up a little example. What is 5% compounded over 10 years versus 10% compounded over 10 years versus 15%, which is really high performance compounded over 10 years. And then the best traders in the world are getting 30% on average over 10 years quite extraordinary, isn't it? So what you want to do is maximize your return, but minimize your risk. The way you minimize your risk with investing is through education. You've got to learn about it. You've got to dig deep and know. So for beginners, start with index funds or perhaps mutual funds, and then work your way towards stocks where you can get a higher return on investment. We're going to look at real estate and then the difference between in investing versus paying off debt and which one is more profitable for us if you're enjoying this please remember to like the video comment down below if you have any stocks or index funds and which you prefer area number three in investing for beginners is real estate now real estate is a tried and tested industry and for hundreds of years people who've invested in real estate have done really well i'm going to share how well in a moment and what sort of return over 10 years you can expect. There's two ways to get into real estate. The first way is for you yourself to go and to buy a property. And depending where you are, this might be buying a flat, which you're then going to let out. It might be buying a house or a duplex or a multiplex. The important thing is that you are physically buying that property and responsible for the upkeep, 
and ensuring that it stays let out because if you buy a property and no one is staying in it then you're losing money the second way you can invest in property is through a property index or mutual fund as we discussed before we these performances vary but it might be easier and if you don't have too much money but really love property and love real estate then you can get in now and start to build up your money and then use that money as a deposit later to invest into buying a flat or some sort of house that you can rent out to others. How much can you expect to get on your buy to let investment? Well, the NCR EIF states that over a 10 year period, you can expect to receive between five and 6% return. That's right, five and 6%. Now, it is less risk than a stock because stocks can go up and down and the company in which the stock is uh, representing can go bust, can go out of business and you get nothing. Real estate, physical property is really difficult to completely destroy and to remove the value of the land. So it is less risky than investing in stocks, but the return is half to 60% of what you can expect from investing in stocks. Now there are certain areas which do better than this and give you a 10, 20 or even 30% return year on year. That requires a lot of attention and focus. And so in investing for beginners, if you are really passionate about real estate, start paying attention to the house prices in areas nearby you. Start understanding the different areas so that you may know which to invest in in order to beat that five to 6%. And certainly you wanna beat the benchmark, which is eight to 10% from index funds. So area number four, which is better to invest or to get out of debt? And that is a critical question because often people want to start investing but have a large amount of debt and are unsure which is better. Very simply, you need to look at the rate of interest that your loan is charging. And if that rate of interest is above 6%, it is better to pay off your debt than to invest. Why 6%? Brad, I thought you said that we were getting 8 to 10% in the stock market. True, but over 10 years, annualized, which means there's going to be up and downs, whereas your interest rate is always 6%. That margin of error is too close. There have been times in the stock market where the returns have been close to zero for a number of years, and it would be far better for you to pay off that 6% interest than it would be to try and get an 8 to 10% return on the stock market. This is tried and tested wisdom. Pay off your debt first and then focus on investments. If you've been struggling with debt and you would like to have some more information on it, I have a video which I will link at the end, which is about crushing debt and shows you how to pay off the debt in half the amount of time. In other words, if you have a car loan that's set for five years, how do you pay it off in two and a half? Or if you have credit card debt, how can you pay that off instead of in three years in 18 months? Check that video out, it is quite powerful. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and share this video with someone who you think it will help because together we can create an abundance.